In Module 3, we examine integration by substitution. As the name suggests, this method involves changing one variable for another to simplify the integration. We use this method when one of the terms of the integrand is a compound function, or a composite function, that is, it's a function of a function. If we're dealing with a function of a function, then it brings to mind the chain rule from differentiation. Recall from Lecture 4 how we apply the chain rule to a composite function. For example, if we have y equals 2x cubed minus 1 to the power 4, we let the inner function, 2x cubed minus 1, equal u, we find dy du, 4u cubed, multiply by du dx, well that's 6x squared, and we end up with the result. Integration is the reverse of differentiation, so if we have an integral, 24x squared times 2x cubed minus 1 to the power 3, then we know it's equal to our original function, 2x cubed minus 1 to the power 4 plus c. Let's look at how we do that in a bit more detail. To apply integration by substitution, we need an integrand of this general form. So we have our composite function, or a compound function there, f of g of x. That's one term in the product. The other term is the first root of that inner function, or something close to it. We simplify the integrand by substituting another variable for the inner function of the composite function. So going back to our function there, first we need to identify the compound function and the inner function. So our compound function is this one, and the inner function is 2x cubed minus 1. We let that equal u. Since we'll be integrating with respect to u, we need to replace dx with du. However, we don't do a straight swap. If we take the derivative of that inner function, we find that du dx is equal to 6x squared. We can treat du dx as a ratio and rearrange it to get du equals 6x squared times dx. So it's the 6x squared dx that we substitute with du. Now in this example we have x squared rather than 6x squared. Let's see how we take care of that. We replace 2x cubed minus 1 with u. We've done that here. And now we have 6x squared dx. To get the 6x squared dx we multiply x squared by 6 and then multiply the whole integral by 1 on 6. 6 times 1 on 6 is equal to 1, so it's an equivalent function. Now we can substitute in du, and we have a much simpler function to integrate. 1 6 times the integral of u cubed. That's quite straightforward. We get 1 6 times u to the fourth on 4 plus c. The final step is to substitute back the original function, gx, for u. And there we have our answer. Now let's set out that method in a little bit more detail. First we identify the integrand as being suitable to apply integration by substitution. The integrand is a product, and one term in the product is a compound function. The other term in the integrand is the first root of, of the inner function of that compound function, or something close to it. Having established that, we identify the inner function, g of x, and let it equal u, and then we compute du equals g prime x dx. We substitute u for g of x, and du for g prime x dx. To get our simplified integration, we apply the rules of integration to get the answer in terms of u, and in the last step, we replace u with g of x to get the answer that we want. This formula is a summary of that process. Now we'll work through some examples. The first one is similar to the ones we've already seen. We have a product, the compound function is a simple power function, and the other term in the product is the first root of, of the inner function. And we go through the process we've just seen. However, even this type of problem is not always immediately obvious, as we can see here. Let's go through example 8. In example 8, we have perhaps the simplest form of integration by substitution. The integrand is a product. One term in the product is a function of x raised to some power, in other words, a function of a function. The other term in the product is the first root of, of that inner function. We substitute u for the inner function and replace u prime dx with du, and then carry on and integrate. As present form, this example may not seem to fit that model, but if we rearrange it, we'll see how it does. So that's the integral 
x to the minus a half times x to the half minus 2 to the minus 3 dx. Here's our candidate for u. So we let u equal x to the half minus 2. That implies du dx is equal to 1 half x to the minus 1 half, or we could write that du is equal to a half x to the minus a half dx. Going back to our integral, we'll replace a half x to the minus a half dx with du. Let's see how we do that. The integral of x to the half minus 2 to the minus 3. Well, we need a half x to the minus a half dx. We didn't originally have a half there, so we, we can multiply the whole integral by 2. So we're going to replace that by, by du and that by u. By substitution, our integral becomes 2 times integral of u to the minus 3 du. Apply our inverse power rule. That's equal to, we have 2. We'll have u to the minus 2 so we need to divide by minus 2, 1 on minus 2, plus c. Well, that's equal to minus u to minus 2 plus c. Substituting back in for u, we'll have a minus x to the half minus 2 to the minus 2 plus c, or in its original form, minus 1 on the square root of x minus 2 plus c. Integration by substitution when we have an exponential function as part of the product is a bit more obvious. We have the exponential function and then the first derivative or something like it of the exponent. We can see how that works with the example 9. In the case of exponential substitution we have a product as our integrand. One term in the product is e to some function of x. The other term in the product is the first root of, of the exponent. That being the case, our indefinite integral is e to the ux plus c. It looks quite simple, but we still need to take care. The exponent in this example is 2 times x squared plus 3. So we'll let u equal 2x squared plus 3. That implies du is equal to 4x dx. So we replace 4x dx with du. Our original problem is 8x e to the 2x squared plus 3 dx. We need to rearrange that slightly. We're after 4x dx. So we'll have e to the 2x squared plus 3, 4x dx dx. How do we get from 8 here to 4 here? We take 2 outside of the whole integral. That will equal 2 times integral of e to the u du. Now we can go straight to this result. So integrating and substituting back in for u we'll have 2 times e to the 2x squared plus 3 plus c. The last type of function we look at in integration by substitution is the case where we have a quotient. Recall from lecture 4 when we applied the chain rule to a log function we ended up with a quotient. For example the derivative of the log of 2x cubed minus 1. We let u equal 2x cubed minus 1. We find dy du, 1 on u, and then du dx, 6x squared. Substitute back in for u and we ended up with 6x squared on 2x cubed minus 1. We can reverse that if we have a quotient. What we're looking for in this case is first of all we have a quotient and the numerator is the first root of, of the denominator or something fairly close to it. Remember we often have to make adjustments to the coefficients to get that relationship. 
When we have that situation, then the integral is the log of u of x. But remember, the arguments of the logs have to be positive. So we take the absolute value of u of x. Here's our final example for module 3. In our last example of integration by substitution, we look at the case where we have a quotient as the integrand, and the numerator of the quotient is the first root of, of the denominator. The indefinite integral then becomes the log of the absolute value of the denominator plus c. We'll work through the example in detail, because once again we need to be careful with the coefficients. Our first step is to let the denominator equal u. So let u equal 7 minus x squared. That implies du is equal to minus 2x dx. The problem we want to solve is the integral of x on 7 minus x squared dx. We can rearrange that. It's the integral of 1 on 7 minus x squared times x dx. We want to substitute minus 2x dx. So we'll put a minus 2 there. The way we do that is to multiply the whole integral by minus 1 half. Now we can substitute in u and du. So it'll be minus a half times the integral of 1 on u du. We now have our problem in the form where we can apply one of the basic rules of integration. So that will equal minus 1 half times the log of the absolute value of u plus c. We substitute back it for u, so it'll be minus 1 half the log, the absolute value of 7 minus x squared plus c.